Wrexham FC's latest chapter is a controversial one in the footballing landscape that we're currently in. This is awful in every way. Money has become a guarantor of success, unless you're Chelsea, but it has changed the game. The modern game is different to perhaps 30 years ago. Some people love it, some people hate it. Whatever side of the coin you land on with Wrexham FC, their accomplishments in recent times are as plain as day. Dominated both the National League and headlines last year, and now they're showing their worth in League 2 as they sit third, equal on points and goal difference with second place and familiar face, Notts County. Wrexham FC, the third oldest football club in the world, but only at the beginning of its story in this new era of football. This is the story of their 2023-24 season in League 2. Yeah, I know that you're going to get this in Welcome to Wrexham Season 3, but if you don't want to wait one year for that, this is the video for you. Transfers have been a huge factor in Wrexham's success as they recruit players from the leagues above. When the owners join the club, they promise to invest, and to the owners' credit, they've delivered on their promise. They bought Ben Tozer from Cheltenham Town, Paul Mullen from Cambridge United, Ollie Palmer from AFC Wimbledon, Elliot Lee from Luton Town, to name just a few of their big transfers from the leagues above, who were all instrumental in getting Wrexham promoted back to the English Football League for the first time since the 2007-08 season. A lot of people struggle with this, as it's not really a fair competition anymore, with the other clubs in that same league who just can't afford the same quality of footballer. But that is the modern game now, and the owners are making the most of it. No Wrexham fans feel negatively about it anyway. The owners delivered on their promise and got Wrexham promoted, and they haven't stopped on their recruitment process. They brought centre-back Will Boyle, who played 18 games for Huddersfield Town in the Championship last season. They also bought George Evans, a defensive midfielder from Millwall, again from the Championship, who has loads of Championship experience, and James McLean from Wigan, who were in the Championship last season and has loads of Premier League and Championship experience. Those were the three main transfers in, which, when you look at the squad they already had that dominated the National League, they now had a really strong squad to start the League 2 season with. Say what you want, if there's one thing that these owners are, it's that they are very good at making money. Capitalising on the huge American fan base for this small Welsh club, Wrexham were able to arrange friendlies with Premier League sides Chelsea and Manchester United in the United States, with over 50,000 fans in attendance for the Chelsea game and over 34,000 fans in the Manchester United game. But it was during the Man U game where arguably the worst player to get injured got injured. Wrexham's best player, Paul Mullen, suffered a punctured lung 12 minutes in. Despite winning the game, Mullen would be out for two months and so miss the first six games of Wrexham's return to League 2. Wrexham's first game back in the EFL for 15 years was against MK Dons and had all the drama you'd expect for such an occasion. Celebrities in attendance, no star striker, Ben Foster in goal, but a nightmare start as Wrexham centre-back O'Connell scored an own goal six minutes in. The game would end 5-3 to MK Dons for a pretty frantic first game back with last minute goals for either side, but a long way off what Wrexham can do on the pitch. They would go on to draw three of the next four games in League 2, with a 4-2 win against Walsall, meaning they were 16th after five games in the league. They would also draw both of their games in the EFL Cup, winning on penalties against Wigan, but losing on penalties to Bradford City. Obviously for a League 2 side, losing in the second round of the EFL Cup is to be expected, but we all know what Wrexham can do, especially on a cup run, which just shows the quality that they can reach. While Paul Mullen was out for these first games of the season, two almost opposing stories were taking place at Wrexham. Firstly, after that loss to MK Dons, Elliot Lee was stepping up and taking on the mantle of Wrexham's best player scoring in four consecutive games in those first five games, and really just being the best player on the pitch in those games. But at the other end of the pitch, goalkeeper Ben Foster was having an awful time. So the game finished, five all, and I was sat there and the manager's doing his team talk and I'm thinking, yeah, I'm not, I've, I'm let, I've let my team down today. I know I've let my team down today. And I had it in my head, I'm thinking, no, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to retire. He conceded five goals against MK Dons, and again against Swindon Town, the latter of which would be his last game before retiring retiring as a legend in everyone's eyes. But yeah, tough start to the season for Wrexham FC. And to replace him, Wrexham would bring in Arthur Okonkwo, on loan from Arsenal, who, like the rest of the squad, is too good for this level. And finally, just to reinforce that attack that had clearly been affected by Paul Mullen's injury, they brought in ex-Premier League player Stephen Fletcher. That said, Paul Mullen has returned and Wrexham's form has turned around. They went on a three-game win streak before a game against Stockport County 
who beat them 5-0, who are currently on a 10-game win streak and are top of the table. Wrexham would draw the next game against Crewe 3-3, thanks to a Paul Mullin double and a Stephen Fletcher last-minute header, and they would draw the next game 0-0 against Mansfield Town, but then went on to win four of the next five games to climb the table to third, with only two losses in 16 games so far this season. Of these four wins in the last five, two were won in dramatic fashion, being 2-1 down against Salford until the 88th minute. Fletcher on his own up front, turns, looks for options, works a wide, good ball, chances the cross, driven in the goal bound, David! Then, against Sutton United, Elliot Lee scored a great volley in the 89th minute to secure a late win. It's not their Hollywood owners that are dramatising this, it's the manner in which they are winning these games. Wrexham are also two wins for two in the EFL Trophy group stage, so could do well in that, and we've still got the infamous FA Cup for Wrexham to pull something out of the bag for that. That brings us up to the current standings so far this season. I'll make this a series as the season goes on, and do a part two and a part three because while this is just the highlights of the season so far, if you want to follow Wrexham this season and not have to wait a full year to catch up on Wrexham FC with Welcome to Wrexham, subscribe because I'll make another video to update you as and when more stuff happens. So yeah, subscribe for that. Peace.